Unfortunately, whether the brain is damaged or suffering from some disease, uh, we don't generate many new neurons, new nerve cells. Uh, and it turns out that most of the, the, the neurons that we have in our brain, of course, have been generated uh, during embryonic development or in early childhood. Uh, however, there are a couple of places in the brain where, where new nerve cells are made continuously throughout life. Uh, one of these is, is in the, um, the olfactory system, which is responsible for smell, uh, and the other is in the hippocampus, a special region which is involved in learning and memory. So these, uh, in both places you find neural stem cells. Uh, these stem cells um, give rise to uh, some new neurons, uh, but they, they can also give rise to other cell types, um, glial cell types, which are the, the cells that support the, the nerve cells. Now, um, uh, there have been uh, attempts to use stem cells from the, from the brain, neural stem cells, to treat, for example, um, stroke. And in fact, there's a clinical trial going on in Scotland at the moment where this is being done. Um, but the evidence suggests that actually the, the stem cells um, aren't doing much. They're not really contributing you know, any new neurons. And uh, uh, the evidence suggests that when you have damage in the brain, that the stem cells, uh, what they do is rather than give new nerve cells, uh, they try and repair the damage immediately by making a scar, uh, and that scar is composed of the glial cell types, the supporting cell types. So really, if you want to have any long-term type of um, repair and benefit and building up brain tissue again, you need n new nerve cells. So we were interested in um, trying to determine some of the f factors present um, in the areas, the, the specialized niches, where the stem cells in the brain um, are, exist. And these factors will be controlling how the stem cells behave, whether they um, self-renew means make more of themselves or whether they differentiate or specialize into becoming either new neurons or new glial cell types. And a um, uh, very talented Spanish postdoc, Mary V. Uh, Gomez uh, Guevara, um, set up a simple assay in tissue culture lab where she put uh, neural stem cells together with uh, one of the compo cellular components of the stem cell niche, which in fact are, are blood vessels. So she took uh, endothelial cells, which are the cells that make capillaries, uh, put the two together, and found a look screen for factors that were made by the endothelial cells of the blood vessels that would uh, have an influence on the behavior of the neural stem cells. Uh, this assay led to um, finding a number of factors, some of which were already known previously from other people's work but also to a novel one, which is called beta cellulin, which had never been looked at in the context of the brain. It turns out that beta cellulin uh, is very efficient at, first of all, stimulating um, self renewal and proliferation of the stem cells themselves. But it also stimulates proliferation of uh, neuroblasts. The neuroblasts are the cell type that is made by the stem cells as sort of an intermediary before they um, specialize into uh, mature neurons, new nerve cells. And so because beta cellulin can stimulate the proliferation of neuroblasts, it turns out that it's very efficient at um, uh, uh, promoting the formation of new nerve cells, uh, particularly, for example, when we were able to infuse this protein into the brains of mice, we, sh we saw both uh, increased numbers of stem cells and increased numbers of neuroblasts, which then went on to go into the areas where you would normally see uh, new neurons made uh, in the olfactory system and the hippocampus. Um, if, uh, rather than putting more beta cellulin into the brain, uh, Mary V uh, used a number of tricks to reduce the amount of beta cellulin, uh, then she found that that reduced the production of neuroblasts and new neurons. So um, beta cellulin is clearly, we think, having a, a normal role in the brain to control the activity of the stem cells and whether they make new neurons or not. So uh, the prospect is now that 
perhaps beta cellulin could be used on its own, perhaps to, to help stimulate production of new neurons in a variety of cases where the brain is damaged through trauma or disease. Or, or it could be introduced along with uh, stem cells from the brain um, to see whether that will boost the, their ability to um, make new neurons and uh, repair brain function, not just simply plug a hole, which is what the, the glial cells do. Um, 